So in today's episode, we're going to talk about your rights as a taxpayer. I refer to your rights in other episodes. I've talked about your right to representation, right? Because as an enrolled agent, not just an enrolled agent, but you all know I'm America's favorite enrolled agent, but the other enrolled agents, they can represent you before the IRS as well, right? Enrolled agents, certified public accountants, which are known as CPAs, and tax attorneys all have the right to represent you before the IRS in any tax court in the United States. But that's not the only right that you have when dealing with the IRS. Retaining representation is big, but there are nine other rights which you can find in Publication 1. This publication is going to explain your rights and the processes for examination, appeals, collection, and refund. Welcome to the Tax Relief with Tim and Bowens podcast. Are you behind on taxes? Is the IRS threatening you or your business? Are you overwhelmed and confused about how to resolve your tax issues? Let's join Timelin as she explains your options and how she may be able to help. Timlin Bowens is America's favorite EA. Hey, family. Listen, I'm more excited than most episodes, and here is why. Today, we are doing episode 50 of the Tax Relief with Timlin Bowens podcast. Every other Friday, since the launch, which was April 8th of 2022, I've brought you a brand new episode of this podcast. And if you've been following me for a while, you know how excited I was with episode 10 and I'm a stats and facts girl. So I have a few of them to share with you today, just so you can celebrate with me on how big this actually is. 95% of podcasts, okay, 95% of them fail. Okay. There are 2.8 million podcasts. And out of all of those podcasts, under half a million are actually active. And only 11% of podcasts make it to 50 episodes. So this is really huge. But I have to thank you because you guys have showed up and showed out for me as my listeners over the past two years. You've helped me on my mission to fill the tax literacy gap one taxpayer at a time. So in today's episode, it's a little bit special. And of course, it is about you all. You know that I have a mission to fill the tax literacy gap one taxpayer at a time. And I know that you're going to share this podcast and especially this episode to help me do that. That's why I want to break down for you what the IRS mission is. The IRS has their own personal mission, and you may not agree with this, but let me know if you think they're doing a good job of fulfilling this. The IRS mission is to provide America's taxpayers with top quality service by helping them understand and meet their responsibility and to enforce the law with integrity and fairness to all. Now, if you found me by doing a Google search of tax relief, you probably aren't going to agree that they're doing a good job of that. However, I hate to break it to you, things could be much worse. But I want to make sure that you understand your rights as a taxpayer when dealing with the IRS, okay? So in today's episode, we're going to talk about your rights as a taxpayer, I've referred to your rights in other episodes. I've talked about your right to representation, right? Because as an enrolled agent, not just an enrolled agent, but you all know I'm America's favorite enrolled agent, but the other enrolled agents, they can represent you before the IRS as well, right? Enrolled agents, certified public accountants, which are known as CPAs and tax attorneys, all have the right to represent you before the IRS in any tax court in the United States. But that's not the only right that you have when dealing with the IRS. Retaining representation is big, but there are nine other rights which you can find in Publication 1. This publication is going to explain your rights and the processes for examination, appeals, 
collection, and refunds. Now, the majority of us are familiar with how refunds work, so I'm not going to dive deep into that today. And I've also talked about doing an appeal and collection in previous episodes. So today, let's just focus on the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. Now, this list is going to be 10 different rights, and this is going to be a general overview. But again, you can go to Publication 1 to follow along if you prefer to do that over writing all of this down today, okay? So number one, as a taxpayer, you have the right to be informed. So that means you have the right to know what you need to do to be in compliance with the IRS. Now, that seems straightforward, but you may not agree because as I mention all the time on this show, taxes are a different language. I like to refer to it as tax and ease. Sometimes you need that tax professional to be the translator for you, right? So with your right to be informed, the IRS, they do their part by putting out different publications to tell you how you should report different income and how you should report different expenses and the record keeping. If you go to irs.gov, it is a beautiful Rolodex of different resources to show you how to be in compliance. But again, if you need help translating that tax and ease, I do recommend that you hire a tax professional. Number two, and don't laugh out loud when I say this, you have the right to quality service. Now, anybody that's been doing taxes longer than five years, when I say doing taxes, I don't just mean professionals. I mean you as a taxpayer. You probably either rolled your eyes or laughed your behind off because we know that the IRS has been so behind on things with the backlog after the pandemic, right? Well, I can assure you on the tax professional side, they are doing their best to use the increase in the budget they have to update different technology so that they can serve you better. With the right to quality service, you as a taxpayer have the right to receive a prompt, courteous, and professional response in your dealings with the IRS, okay? And again, it's supposed to be spoken in a way that you understand, but with it being a different language, sometimes that doesn't always happen. The publications are written in very simple language, but if you have an issue that you still still can't really comprehend, I'll put in a shameless plug, the Tax Tips with Timlin, or not podcast, but blog, is a good resource to have this information in layman's terms, okay? Number three, you have the right to pay no more than the correct tax. Now, I'm laughing because that's not for the folks that don't believe that they shouldn't have to pay taxes at all right? What this is referring to is that you as a taxpayer, you have the right to only pay the amount of tax that is legally due. This includes interest and penalties. That's why for the sake of transparency, the IRS posts what the different interest rates are for each quarter, okay? You can look at those and also look at your tax transcripts If you don't know how to find those, you can check out a previous episode where I go over how to pull your transcripts and make sure that you aren't being charged more interest than you actually should be. That's your right as a taxpayer to not pay more than you have to. Number four is the right to challenge the IRS position and be heard. So with that, you have every right to disagree with the IRS, but don't just be a social media street fighter, right? And post on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter about it with that rant. The IRS does actually want to hear from you and you have the opportunity to not just say, I disagree, but to be heard by someone and to have it examined. So with the raised objections, you need to make sure that you actually have substantiation for your claim. Provide additional documentation. Remember, 
the burden of proof is always going to fall on you as the taxpayer. Number five, you have the right to appeal an IRS decision in an independent forum. So again, in a previous episode, I've talked about the appeals process, and it's so important to recognize that they have that independent forum just so you're protected as a taxpayer and it doesn't look like the IRS is only looking out for their own, right? So let's say that you challenged a position and the IRS, they are standing 10 toes down on what they said. As a taxpayer, you have the right to appeal that decision, okay? So with that, you were able to appeal penalties and you can take it all the way up to the tax court if you so desire and you do it timely. Number six, you have the right to finality. Now, what exactly does that mean? That means that you have the right to know the maximum amount of time that you have to challenge the IRS position. Because if you remember, just a few minutes ago, I said that you have the right to take your case to tax court if you act timely. When the IRS sends you any type of notice, they attach this taxpayer bill of rights. They also let you know how long you have to appeal. You have to make sure that if you were going to exercise that right, that you do it timely, okay? Now, under this right as well, you also have the right to know when the IRS has finished an audit, where they are on the process of examining your return. That is your right as a taxpayer. Number seven, you have the right to privacy. You have the right to expect that the IRS If it's enforcement, if it's an inquiry, they are going to keep your information private and be no more intrusive than necessary. What does this look like? If the IRS is looking for your assets to seize, they cannot disclose how much in total for separate years and things that you owe. Okay, so essentially they can't take your financial tea that you owe them and go tell everybody. All right. Again, it's no more intrusive than necessary. If they are going to seize a bank account, they are going to be in correspondence with your bank. If they are going to send a letter to your employer to have your wages garnished, they are going to be in correspondence with them as well. Number eight, you have the right to confidentiality. So you have the right to expect that any information that's provided to the IRS will not be disclosed unless they have been authorized by you or the law. An example of this, if you were to work with me as your representative and I become the enrolled agent working on your case, you would have to fill out a 2848. And actually, I would fill it out. You have to sign it, but you follow me. That is going to authorize me to talk to the IRS on your behalf, but it's not going to authorize me to give your information to anyone else because of your right to privacy and your right to confidentiality. The IRS cannot talk to anyone about your account that has not been authorized on a form 2848. Spouses cannot call spout on behalf of a spouse. Now, it's a little bit different if we have a married filing jointly account, but if we have two spouses that file separately, spouse A cannot call on behalf of spouse B unless it has been authorized by the taxpayer. So when you are searching for somebody to represent you, if you're negotiating in an audit, what have you, make sure that they are credentialed and can actually represent you by using a Form 2848. Again, this is going to be either an enrolled agent or a CPA or a tax attorney. If you are a fan of the podcast, you are familiar with uh, number nine, the right to representation. This gives you the right to seek assistance from the low income taxpayer clinic if you cannot afford representation. 
I want to put that out there because I have people reach out to me. And as I say often, I have this podcast that's free. I have tax tips with Tim one that's free. But if we actually work together and I'm standing in the gap for you to represent you before the IRS, that is not going to be free. Okay, so if you cannot afford to work with me or work with another credential preparer, the IRS does give you the right to retain representation using the low income taxpayer clinic. Okay, now that clinic is going to be free. There is one in almost every major city. Um, There is one right here in Louisville, Kentucky, but there is usually going to be a wait. However, You can find out where the nearest clinic is to you by checking out the Tax Advocate Services website, okay? Now, last but not least, this is the right that I would say I protect the most when representing a taxpayer, and that is number 10, the right to a fair and just tax system. There are so many taxpayers when they owe that feel like they've been taken advantage of by the IRS, like they're just milking them and just running the bank account dry, okay? You can expect the tax system to consider facts and circumstances that might affect your underlying liability, that may affect your ability to pay, or ability to provide information timely. Now, what does this sound like? It sounds like the process of tax relief that I've shared over and over again. When you hire a professional, when you're working with somebody like me, we make sure that we take your financial information and we tell the story of how this liability happened, what your ability to pay is, and we make sure that information gets in timely. Because we want to make sure that the IRS isn't taking advantage of you and that you are experiencing a fair and just tax system. Now, before I go, if you are in the need of tax representation and you owe the IRS $100,000 or more, or maybe they just cleared out your bank account and you don't think they have the right to do that, or maybe they just issued a lien that you'd like removed, you are welcome to book a call with me to see if you would be a good fit to work with me at Bowens Tax Solutions. You can do that by visiting www.bowenstaxsolutions.com. But remember, even if you don't work with me, make sure that you get the help that you need. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen today. I'd like to thank Jim Ray Consulting Services for helping me get this message out to you. I hope you found the information helpful. Did you know one in 50 people have a tax problem? Please share this episode with your friends and family because you never know who may need help. Again, thanks for listening. Hey, just as a reminder, this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. It provides a framework and possible solutions for solving your tax problems, but it is not legally binding. Please consult your tax professional regarding your specific tax situation.